Hey friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV, and you're watching Auto News Sunday for June 8th, 2014. This week, Chevrolet announces horsepower figures for their most powerful Corvette ever, while well, BMW shows us their second generation X6 Sports Activity Coupe, and General Motors issues a thorough, a brutally tough, and deeply troubling mea culpa over the ignition switch recall saga. All this and more is coming right up on Test Driven TV. This week, BMW unveiled their second generation X6 Sports Activity Coupe with all new styling and new for this year, a rear wheel drive model. The entry level X6 is powered by BMW's 300 horsepower twin turbo inline six and will come in both rear wheel drive as the S Drive 35i and all wheel drive as the X Drive 35i. The more powerful X6 X Drive 50i gets an updated 445 horsepower twin turbo 4.4 liter V8, only coming in all wheel drive. All models are equipped with BMW's 8-speed Steptronic Sport automatic transmission. Exterior design is all new but evolutionary in typical BMW fashion. The tantalizing 5-passenger interior comes slathered with the latest exotic woods, leathers, and BMW's newest suite of infotainment, navigation, and driver assistance technologies. The new 2015 BMW X6 will be built at the Spartanburg, South Carolina plant and arrives in dealerships later this fall. Pricing will be announced closer to launch. Now, Just a few months after Mini showed off their all-new hardtop two-door, this week they've unveiled a four-door version that's a little more traditionally styled than the Clubman. The new Mini hardtop four-door is 6.3 inches longer, which affords seating for five and a usable cargo area behind the rear seat. It comes standard with the company's new turbocharged three-cylinder engine with 134 horsepower and a 189 horsepower four-cylinder turbo in the Cooper S hardtop four-door. Both engines will be available with a six-speed manual or a six-speed Steptronic. The new Mini hardtop four-door goes on sale in January 2015 at just $1,000 more than the Mini hardtop two-door. Now, if you didn't really care for the barn doors on the last generation Clubman, you'll be happy to know the mini hardtop four-door has a standard hatch. Nice! Chevrolet this week in our feature story announced that their new Corvette Z06 will have 650 horsepower. This makes it the most powerful car General Motors has ever produced. Chevrolet says notable is the fact that torque is wide across the rev range starting at 457 pound-feet right off idle and 625 pound-feet at only 2800 rpm. The new supercharged engine is based on the same 6.2 liter V8 found in the Stingray but has several unique features in addition to its 1.7 liter supercharger. To name a few, it gets rotocast aluminum cylinder heads, lightweight titanium intake valves, forged connecting rods, aluminum pistons and stainless steel exhaust manifolds. It has a relatively high 10 to 1 compression ratio for a forced induction engine enabled with use of direct fuel injection. The 2015 Z06 will be standard with a 7-speed manual transmission or an all-new paddle shift 8-speed automatic. The 2015 Corvette Z06 goes on sale this fall and it's going to cost a lot. Bet on it. In our test drives this week, we were very busy with four separate reviews, two of which actually made it on our I'd Buy It list for 2014, the high honor week of a vehicle when I just plain like it enough to buy one. So let's get right to it. Starting with the 2015 Volvo V60 T5 Drive E Wagon, its combination of style, power, and taut handling won me over. I like the combination of SUV-like utility and low car-like drive, which is all too uncommon in today's market. Also winning a spot on the iBuy list was a 2014 Hyundai Santa Fe Sport 2.0T all-wheel drive. The compact SUV brings a consistent level of talent across the board from quality to performance. It's a well-executed competitor in its class and worth a look for anyone shopping in it. We also got our first look and chance to drive the all-new Chrysler 200 sedan at a local Phoenix press event this week. We learned some of the car's highlights as well as got some first opinions from behind the wheel of what likely is Chrysler's most important new car in a decade. Last but not least, we took the top-of-the-line Lexus LX570 SUV off-road to see how well it navigates the rough. Sharing its basic architecture with the Toyota Land Cruiser, it brings legendary off-road prowess and a true high-end luxury wrapper. 
For these test drives and more, log on to testdriven.tv or our YouTube channel. Now, on a reality check segment this week, GM CEO Mary Barra announced the delivery of an independent report about what's become known as the Cobalt Ignition Switch Scandal. This stems from a faulty ignition switch which could be bumped or brushed, unwittingly changing it to the off position. This is believed to have caused a number of injuries and even deaths, where a lapse in power steering and power brakes led to accidents where airbags failed to function. The issue in the delayed recall action to solve it has caused widespread lawsuits and PR problems for the company, an issue that Barra addressed in a town hall meeting this week. On Monday, former U.S. Attorney Anton Velukas presented the findings from his investigation into our ignition switch recall. I can tell you this report is extremely thorough, brutally tough, and deeply troubling. I want it known that this recall issue isn't merely an engineering or a manufacturing or a legal problem. It represents a fundamental failure to meet the basic needs of these customers. With these vehicles, we simply didn't do our job. We failed these customers, and we must face up to it, and we must learn from it. What Volucas uh, found in this situation was a pattern of incompetence and neglect. Repeatedly, individuals failed to disclose critical pieces of information that could have fundamentally changed the lives of those impacted by the faulty ignition switch. The report highlights a company that operated in silos, with a number of individuals seemingly looking for reasons to not act instead of finding ways to protect our customers. GM personnel's inability to address the ignition switch problem, which persisted for more than 11 years, represents a history of failures. Through the entire 11-year history, there was no demonstrated sense of urgency right to the very end. Overall, the report concludes that from start to finish, the Cobalt saga was riddled with failure, which led to tragic results for many. Fifteen G employees did get let go, five were schooled, and a compensation fund's been created to address the aggrieved families of the injured or dead. You know, I admire Barra's stand-up and take action stance showing that GM and their employees are taking this very seriously. You know, but I get the feeling that this is far from over and the raking of the coals, well, there's still more to come. Now on a personal note this week, I want to thank you, our viewers, for giving us a chance to be here. After all, we're celebrating this week one year on the tube. We now have over 3,000 subscribers on YouTube and 1 million views. These are numbers that aren't necessarily large compared to some of our peers, but they're numbers we're very proud of and I'm thankful to you for. So if you'd like to subscribe, click on the link below or log on to testdriven.tv. That's our report this week. I'm Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoy the ride.